Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss one of the most interesting topics, which is the coin change problem in dynamic programming. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So, if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without any further ado, Let's get started with our agenda for today's session. First, we will define the coin change problem. Following that, we will look at the coin change problem using dynamic programming. Finally, we will look into the steps of coin change problem. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now, let's begin with our first topic and attempt to comprehend the coin change problem. The coin change problem is defined as the total number of ways you can change the given amount of money using the coins. And we are provided with different types of coins or coins of varying denominations and a specific amount that is W. Let's look into an example. The denominations of the coins are 1, 2 and 3 and 5 is the weight. So how can we achieve a weight 5 with 3 coins? There are number of ways to do this. First, we will need 5 1 rupee coins. The second way to make 5 is to use 3 1 rupee coins and 1 2 rupee coin. The third way of doing it is using 2 1 rupee coins and 1 3 rupee coins. The fourth way is to use 1 2 rupee coin and 1 3 rupee coin. And the last way is using 1 2 rupee coin and 1 3 rupee coin. There is no other way to make the number 5 using 1 2 and 3 rupee coins. So in total we have 5 ways to make weight equal to 5 using these coins. Now we will see how dynamic programming can be used to solve the coin change problem. Let us suppose we have a different demonstration of coin as 2, 3 and 5 and we have to make the total sum weight as 8 with the same condition that we can use an infinite number of coin supplies. We must generate a table in the coin change problem using dynamic programming because we will store the results and use them later. So in this table, the column side will have coin values of 2, 3 and 5 and the row will have to store the weight by dividing it into smaller weights because in dynamic programming, we will divide problems into sub-problems that are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 until 8. Here are three simple steps of solving the coin change problem with dynamic programming. The first step is to exclude the coin the second step is to include the coin and the final step is to add the first and second steps. Let's start with the coin of demonstration 2 and the sum is 0. So there's only one way to go because if we don't choose the coin value 2, we'll obviously make sum or weight as 0 and the same goes for coin 3 and 5. So we'll write 1, 1 and 1 below the sum of 0. Now that the sum is 1, we can make it 1 using a coin value of 2. The answer is no. We can't make it 1 using a coin value of 2. So we will fill 0 in here. Next, we must make the sum 2 using 2 rupee coin and there is only one way to do so. Use 1 2 rupee coin. Next, we can make a sum of 3 using a coin of denomination 2? The answer is no. So we'll mark this entry as 0. We can now make a sum of 4 by using a coin with a value of 2 rupee coins in only one way. So we'll update 1 as the location changes. In the same way, we will update the entire row of coin denominations 2. Now that we have a new coin with a denomination of 3, we will have one trick. If the coin value is greater than the sum, simply copy the first values above. For example, if the coin value is 3 and the sum is 1, we will simply copy the value which is above, which is 0. Again, the coin value is 3 and the sum is 0, which is less than the coin value, so we will simply copy the value above, which is 1. Next, we have sum of 3 and coin value of 3 that is not greater than 3. We will now proceed with those simple 3 steps. 
If we exclude coin value 3, we simply copy the value above which is 0 and if we exclude coin value 3, we subtract that same row weight, that 3 with coin value that is also 3, which gives us 0. And what we have below weight 0 in the same row is 1. So we will add both values that 0 and 1, which gives us 1. Next, for sum 4, we exclude coin value 3. We must simply copy the value which is above, which is 1. And by including 3, we must subtract the sum value, which is 4, from the coin value, which is 3, which gives on. And what we have below sum 1 in the same row is 0. So we add 0 and 1, which is 1. So in the same manner, we will fill out all the entries for sum 5, 6, 7 and 8 of 3 coin denominations. Now that we have coin value 5, we use the same trick. If coin value 5 is greater than the sum of 1, which is true, we simply copy the values which are lying above the row. So we have done for the first row, that is 0. So by excluding coin value 5 and we are left with 2 and 3 and what we have of coin 2 and 3 in the same row is 0 and 1 and the sum of 0 and 1 which gives 1 and by including coin value 5 we have to subtract sum to coin value 5 which gives 0 and what we have below the sum of 0 of the same row which is 1 so 1 plus 1 gives 2 so we update the same the sum is now 6 and the coin value is also 5 so if we exclude coin the value 5 we are left with 2 and 3 and what we have of coin 2 and 3 is the same row is 1 and 2 and the sum of 1 and 2 which gives 3 and we include coin value 5 we have to subtract sum of 6 with coin value 5 which gives us 1 and what we have below the sum 1 of the same row which is 0 so sum of 3 plus 0 gives us 3 we will update the same so in the same manner we will fill out all the entries of sums of 7 and 8 of 5 coin denominations so in the end we got 3 which is our answer indicating that we have a minimum of 3 ways to make the sum of 8 using denomination coin value which is 2, 3 and 5. Now in this video we will go over all the steps that we went to solving the coin change problem with dynamic programming. First we had a 2D array named coin change which has i as the number of rows and j as the number of columns. Now in this algorithm we will have two for loops one for i and another for checking the values of columns within i that is row. So the first loop runs from 0 to the maximum length of the coin which is the coin dot length and the second loop runs for the first column to the weight. If coins of i are greater than j we simply copy coin change of i of j is equal to the coin change if i minus 1 of j otherwise we must apply the three step formula coin change of i of j is equal to coin change of i minus 1 of j plus coin change of i of j minus coin of i. Lastly, we will see the practical implementation. So on my screen you can see a program example for coin change problem. First, we finished all the necessary header files, standard library, standard library strings, which all these strings are defined and console input output library. So first we have a function called collect which has an array called sum and two variables called m and n for number of coins and n number of weight. So this is our first function. So m is number of coins and n is the weight. Then in this function we declared four variables, two counter variables and in variable for including the coin value and x variable for excluding the coin value. Then we declared our 2D array which is a coin change array in which we need n plus 1 rows because the coin change is built from the bottom up using base case 0. Next we have two for loops, one for row that will run until the coin length is reached 
and another for column that will run until the sum or weight is reached. In this for loop, we will first include the coin value j. We get the value after subtracting the j value from the coin value i. If the coin value i is greater than 0, we simply assign the coin change of i minus the coin change of the same column. If we exclude the coin value from this, we have the condition that if jth value is greater than 1, we assign coin change of i of j minus 1, otherwise we assign 0. Alternatively, simply return the coin change from n of m minus 1. Next we have the main function in which we declare the array of coin values and assign the coin values of 2, 3 and 5. Then we have the same m variable in which we divide the coin and then we have variable n in which we have sum as 8 and finally we print the total number of coin combinations that sums up. Now let's quickly execute this program and see the output. So there you go, the program got successfully executed and we have the output over here. And this example we considered is the same which one we have discussed before. And the final value is 3 that you can see over here. And you can see the answer as the total number of combinations of coins that sum up to value 8 is 3. Now with that we have come to an end of this video. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you need the code that we have executed in this particular tutorial, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.